Alhamdulillah wahdah Assalatu wassalamu ala man la nabiya ba'dah wa ba'd Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafahu qawli سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In our previous session uh, we discussed about the concept of Jah What is Jah? It is prominence, prestige, fame or to be famous among the people As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put many things in our, in our, in our, in our nature, in human nature so one of the element within us is to be prominent, to be famous. There is something natural in us. And it is this element which drives a person sometimes to, to, to commit such a things which are not permitted by Sharia. And uh, it is it's the concept of Jah which takes a person to achieve more and more fame and then a person becomes fame hungry. He wants to be famous firstly within his own vicinity. Then his his nafs won't be satisfied once he's being known among his own people, among his own tribe, among his own caste, among his own relatives. Then this is increasing, and then a person wants to be famous in his own region, and ultimately in his own state, then his own country, then at international level, and there are no limits to it. Then a person wants to maintain that position. If you see the element behind is ja. To be known by others when you go to some when you go to any place that people should respect you pe people should acknowledge you people should give give much space and time to you that's something in the human heart a person wants to be like that it is only taqwa which controls the sentiment otherwise everybody has this in the heart and this is one of the deadly diseases of the heart imam al-ghazali rahimahullah he mentions that that the love of jah this love of this prominence, to be eminent or to be famous among the people, it is more dangerous than the love of wealth. As we have discussed in our previous one of in our one of previous sessions, we have discussed the uh, the importance of the wealth, and, as, and at the same breath, we also discussed the demerits of the wealth, merits and demerits of the wealth. We have discussed this in our one of our previous sessions, and there. We discuss about that uh, the wealth is a good thing, an important thing for our survival. But when it crosses the limits, it becomes dangerous for a person. Then a person is living for the wealth, not the other way around that Allah has created the wealth for us in order to live a smooth life so that we can fulfill the, the requirements of our life. We can, we can fulfill the needs of the life. So when the love of wealth crosses the limits then a person practically becomes becomes a, an animal same happens with the jah it is more deadly than the love of wealth because here you cannot find something tangible you cannot you cannot find something uh, something material it is all uh, a latent it's all a kind of uh, abstract thing which, which we cannot see, which we cannot touch, which, which, it, which is something which is, which is being felt and experienced by a person. So jaw is uh, one of the deadliest diseases of the heart. That's why ulama of Islam, scholars of Islam have discussed the, the demerits of the jaw and uh, the different dimensions of the jaw so that we are protected from it. Yes, we should be known uh, but not the people of the world which must be known among the angels. We must be known among the heavens. And if a person wants to be prominent in the Akhirah, not here, there are certain requirements which have to be fulfilled. But most of us, what we are doing, we are trying to fulfill the requirements which make us prominent in this dunya, in this worldly life. And this applies to almost all the fields, all walks of life. In every field, people want to be prominent. Businessman wants to be more a prominent businessman. 
a scholar wants to be a proper prominent scholar as one of the hadith says prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that on the day of judgment three type of people will be brought before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they'll be produced to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of them will be scholar and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him i bless you with the knowledge what did you do of it <clears throat> he will say allah i acquired the knowledge i spent i spent years together to learn the knowledge then i was teaching the people i was preaching the knowledge and i was disseminating the knowledge among the people so that they learn the deen and my objective was to get your rida to get your pleasure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say kadabta you did tell a lie your objective was so that people will say he is very much knowledgeable people, person and this you see is very knowledgeable person what is the end end outcome of it to be prominent among the people so it is ya yeah, is a worldly prestige a person wants to wanted to acquire though apparently you cannot find anything with him but which it is something which is felt in the heart it is something which spoils and destroys the heart and, uh, and this is such a dangerous disease that slowly and stealthily it creeps into the heart and a person doesn't know it is such a dangerous dangerous disease of the heart that many a times a person doesn't know that he has become the victim of this disease because it slowly and stealthily makes its way to the heart and then a person becomes uh, what i simply call it stage hungry person he wants to be heard by everyone he wants to be given attention by everyone wherever he goes he wants to be acknowledged and this way a person slowly 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 gets away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now he adores his own life he had, he, he he elevates his own position and his he keep on elevating it keep on elevating it and then you can see the the life of the celebrities it's actually what is the celebration what they celebrate they celebrate the attention of the people now unfortunately the evil effects of the social media it has it has made the things worse so since we are supposed to face our allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says why we discuss the jah why what 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 what's important what is the significance of discussing the jah actually we know that a day is going to come it is approaching closer and closer to us when we are supposed to face our allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah says in the quran yawma la yanfa'u ma'lum wa la banun the day when neither the wealth nor the children will benefit a person yawma la yanfa'u ma'lum wa la banun when the, when neither the wealth nor the children will benefit a person illa man atallaha biqalbin salim except the one who comes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the with a sound heart how do we define the sound heart is not in terms of cardiology sound heart it's in terms of spirituality that there should be no any disease with the heart and one of the deadliest diseases of the heart is ja that's why we need to just discuss it more we discuss it more we try to find out the different elements of the jaw the different dimensions of the jaw then and only then we we may save and protect ourselves from it and uh, at every session the nafs is it is tempted the nafs and it wants to do something which catches the attention of the people so as i said before it is not specific to any field to all walks of life the people want to be prominent in every field so our scholars have given enough attention to it so that when we when we meet our allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't have any trace of this deadliest disease in our heart so ja is uh, something which is in our human heart it simply means love loving to be prominent famed and famous and to have prestige among people and, uh, and then imam al-ghazali rahimahullah he mentions that jah and and wealth are the main pillars of worldly life 
and the love of both of them is naturally inculcated in the hearts of the men. But jaw is more, much more loud than wealth. This is because wealth is just a mere means that is used for getting something likable or desirable. But jaw provides men, in addition to this, with respect, esteem and high position amongst the people, to such a degree that wealth cannot provide. Many wealthy people are despised. See, there are many smugglers. They have millions and billions of the wealth, but people don't respect them. They don't get the attention of the people. So they have enormous wealth. So specifically those people who acquire their wealth through unlawful means, so they, 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 they can enjoy, they can, they can enjoy the material life. They can buy any delicious food. They can buy expensive clothes. They can have the very comfortable bungalows. But to be respected by the people is something different. To be celebrated by the people is something different. So wealth alone cannot do this. And that's what Imam al-Ghazali mentions here, that it is a jah which provides a person such a thing which the wealth cannot provide. And uh, uh, nevertheless, it should be put in mind that Jah may be praiseworthy in the sense that just as man needs wealth to secure for him such necessities of life as food and drink, he may also need some kind of prominence and prestige that enable him to lead a sound and safe life amongst the people. It is quite known that some people need guards to protect them, servants to fulfill their needs and the like. This is not blameworthy as long as it is sought within legal limits. And, however, one form of the prestige, one form of the fame is uh, uh, popularity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes such people popular who devote themselves to him. As one of the hadiths is Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Man tawada alillah, opposite to the jah, opposite to this, this self-esteem and prominence. Opposite to jah is tawadu. Tawadu means humbleness, humility. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Whoever humbles himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't want any sort of fame, doesn't want, doesn't want to be popular among the people. Man tawada alillah, rafa'ahullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalts his position. So this, this is a person. And how Allah exalts his position, there are many ways. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his position in the, uh, 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 and ranks in the Jannah. And he exalts him or elevates him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him, makes him famous among the people. As our all ulama and scholars. Our sahaba ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in. And then we can see our, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa All across the centuries all over the world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is any any being which is being deadly loud by the people that's Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is, is and that's not na'udhu billah we cannot say that is jah that is that's a karama is a respect and honor bestowed upon upon his prophets by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, his love is in our hearts. And we love him more than our own lives, more than our own family, more than, more than our own parents. And that's, we cannot call it jah. Actually, this is when you give up the jah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces, his, replaces it with a tremendous respect and love. And all the prophets, see many prophets uh, which we know, but there are hundreds and thousands of prophets whose name we don't know. But still when we say prophet, we say peace be upon him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him. And then so our, the companions of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The best generations under the sky after prophets is a, is a generation of the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi wa shmain. And many of the Sahaba, all across the centuries, all over the world, from, from, from India to Nigeria, 
from one part of the world to the other part of the world. Whenever we say we 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 pronounce their names, we say Radiallahu Anhu. May Allah be pleased with him. May Allah be pleased with them. And they never want to be famous. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants this respect, this honor to them. And this is not the jah. Jah is which is which is uh, uh, desired by a person, which finds its way in the heart to be known among the people. And Sahaba Ridmanullah Ta'ala Alim Ajma'in, their life was it was all they wanted to be anonymous. They, whatever they did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they didn't want to show it to anyone else. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two things very important to understand. If a person keep on performing sins, committing the sins, stealthily, a person keep on committing the sins and he nobody knows about it. That if he seeks the repentance for this, if he seeks the maqfara from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, quite hopefully that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive this sin. But if a person keep on committing the sin and at the same breath he is not, uh, he is not uh, offering the repentance, he is not seeking the maqfara and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he cannot control it for a long period of time, it will get exposed to the people. It will definitely get exposed to the people as a filth, However, we, we try to just cover it. It will give it this foul smell. The bad smell will definitely one day come, come out. Likewise, however, we try to just cover the scent of perfume. It will give it a good smell. And a person keep on performing the good deeds and doesn't want to know, doesn't want to let the people know about it. He is doing this only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserves these amal, these actions or these deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes it to the people. And this way, otherwise, how come we knew, knew the stories of our predecessors? Is Allah, they didn't want it to be exposed. They didn't want, to, they didn't want, let, they didn't wish the people should know about it. But their sincerity to Allah, their loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the high degree of their sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it available to the people. And now we know their devotion, their sacrifice, their sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is entirely different than the jah. And so if even if once during one's lifetime, say the scholars or the pious people, they enjoy the people are just loving them. But in their hearts, whether people celebrate them or not, this hardly matters to them. There's a sign of that a person is not having the jaw in his heart. A person, whether one person is listening to him or thousands of people are in front of him, this hardly makes any difference to him. Yes, one thing is that uh, a scholar always wants more and more audience so that his knowledge is disseminated among more and more people. That is one of the strategies to get more and more reward. But as far as that real objective is concerned, it is done, the, the objective is to seek the pleasure of Allah. And this seeking the pleasure of Allah doesn't depend upon the number of the people. So these, the, 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 the true scholar is the one that whether they are people or not. So this hardly matters to them. But what matters to them uh, is, to, is, to, is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, there are the scholars that thousands of people listen to them. But still, it doesn't, it doesn't develop any sort of arrogance in their heart. They don't feel any special. And instead, they, they do a lot of istighfar. Ya Allah, it is all your, it's all your, your help, your assistance, tawfiq, that you facilitated all these things to us. So, Sahaba Ridmanullah Ta'ala Alam is one of the attributes of the Sahaba was that they were loving the khifa, ikhfa. Ikhfa means to be anonymous. And this is one of the this is one of the beautiful attributes or one of the characteristics which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those servants who love to be anonymous. Sayyidina uh, Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu when he came from Yemen 
and he went to the prophetic prophet's grave sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam may Allah's incessant reckless blessings be upon that place so he was crying there Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab he happened to pass by and he asked him ma yubikika ya Mu'adh O Mu'adh what caused you to cry he said oh Umar I remembered one of the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna adna riya shirk inna adna riya shirk the least form of the riya, the least form of show off is shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are al-atqiya, al-akhfiya, those who are pious and those who are anonymous, who love to be anonymous, who will enjoy the anonymity. Wherever they go, if people don't know, when people doesn't know them, and people don't, they are not familiar with them, and they love to be in that anonymity. And and then he gave a description that when they come to a session, nobody welcomes them. And if they are if they miss the session, if they don't come to a session, Lam nobody misses them, nobody asks about them, where is he? So they are such we can say attentionless people that nobody pays any sort of attention towards them. Ulaika Masabihul Khuda. O Mu'az, they are the lamps of guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes many hardship or many punishments through them. So there's, as far as the jah is concerned, it is strictly connected to the riyah. We need to just understand a subtle difference between riyah and the jah. Though one thing is common in both riyah, means show off, ostentation, and the jah, this prominence. One thing is common. Common is that a person wants to, 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 to be prominent and to show something to the people. That is Riyah. And then through showing that particular action or the particular attribute or particular trait or characteristic, he wants to be famous among the people. One, he wants to show that he is some special person. And through this, he wants the people accept and acknowledge that he is best his special person. That is Jah. And then he loves it a lot. So Riya and Jah are interconnected. A person is showing why he is showing off. Because he wants to impress others. Why? What's the objective behind exposing his deeds to others or his characteristics to others? So that people acknowledge as he is having some special abilities. And because of these special abilities, he wants to be, he wants to be prominent. And all these things, now we see, and now which people are being celebrated? Those which are, and now people are trying to get this celebration through the sinful acts. They commit the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they want to achieve this, this, this status of celebrity. So these are all deadly things. Mata'ul hayat dunya These are is a deception and traps of the shaitan. The true life and the pious life is based on anonymity. Actually, our main objective is to get the success of dunya and success of akhirah. And that, that can never be achieved unless and until a person makes himself sincere for all these actions. His devotion is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our our, our, our predecessors, they knew the deadly effect of the jah. They were knowing that if we don't take care of it, it will, it will spoil us, it will destroy us. And uh, unfortunately, since uh, we are suffering through the jah also, in our own, in, in our own domains, in our own locale, we all suffer through the jah as well. The, some of the reflections of the jah is just uh, uh, when we do something, we want to make it exposed to the people. And the now easiest method is the social media. However, if the intention is good always, if the intention is good and uh, we post something on social media, that's a good thing because ultimately what is counted it is the intention. In jah, 
what is corrupted first it is intention so when when intention is corrupted the action is corrupted because in amal a'malu bin niyat the actions of a person are counted according to his intention actions of a person are considered according to his intention if the intention is not good then uh, the person However, action he do good that will not be counted and considered by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the jah is, which it is a deadly disease, which 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 brings ruin to a person. And uh, as I said, that it starts from the small things, and then slowly, 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 it reaches to the level when a person declares, and he announces, "Fakal an Rabbukum al A'la." And he said, "I am your Lord, the greatest." That is Pharaoh who announced this. And a Rabbu Kumul Aala. So this jah takes a person from small level, small steps, to the level where he declares to be the Lord, the greatest. That's why the Sahaba did one Allah Taala Alaihi Wasallam in the Tabi'in and our predecessors. They never wanted to be famous among the people. Because whatever they did, they did it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They did not want to disclose their actions, their deeds to some, someone else, because they knew that they are doing this only for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. All their actions, all their deeds, it was meant to be for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And uh, now uh, we have this this element in our in our heart. So all of us should now focus upon it. See, now the 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 ratio may vary from person to person. Someone may be having the stronger elements, or stronger the degree is quite stronger, but someone may be having the weak degree. But it is there. You cannot say no; it is not there. Yes. However, sometimes to be from you you want to, you have to show something to the people. You have to expose your action, your deed to the people. And that's one of the we can say one of the exception when we are supposed to expose the deeds and actions to the people. But objective is not to get fame from the people. It's not to get the popularity among the people. But objective is actually to 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 incite the people, to provoke the people to commit that good deed, to perform that good deed. And on the part of that person, on the part of the doer, his action, his intention is good, and he doesn't want the any sort of fame, any sort of jah. Any sort of prominence, but his objective is to sh- to expose it to the people so that more and more people do this good deed. As one of the hadith says that Prophet says, sometimes sadaqa, charity, is better to be to, to to be given in anonymity that nobody knows about it. But sometimes giving sadaqa openly and expose it to the people is much better. Specifically when we are supposed to enjoin others. When we are supposed to incite and motivate others upon this particular good deed, or many there are many other like the knowledge, the Quran, or other sessions to get to 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 attract more and more people to it. So for this, we need to have the advertisements, promo, and all these things. Once the intention is fixed, then there is no problem to it. It will no, it will no way be counted as jah. Because the first and important thing is in jahil that corruption of the heart, corrupt corruption of the intention. When heart is corrupted, intention is corrupted. That is a step towards a jah. But when once it is taken care of, the person takes care of his intention, then he is supposed to expose certain good deeds to others. That's not in the uh, that never comes under the category of the jah, because jah is something which is connected to the nafs of a person, his own personal nafs. He 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 exposes his actions. To others, so that people uh, acknowledge him, they praise him, they commend him, <clears throat> and uh, and he feels elated, and he feels yes, I'm special, I'm better than others. That is one of the satanic uh, satanic uh, mindset. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala asked Iblis, "Ma manaka an tashudu li Adam?" O oh, Iblis, what prevented you to prostrate before Adam, peace be upon him? And he said, "An akhirum minhu." I'm better than him. So any person who thinks himself to be better than others, 
is one of the satanic uh, satanic mindset we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all sorts of deadly diseases of the heart we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a shifa to our physical ailments to our intellectual ailments to our psychological ailments and to our spiritual ailments to our heart all of all sorts of disease we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a shifa from and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq that whatever we do in this dunya, we do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the sake of any worldly fame, not for the sake of any worldly gain, not for the sake of just pleasing the people, not for the sake of getting the attention of the people. <coughs> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our deeds, all our actions. Amin ya Rabbi.